guys let's be honest being a woman is not easy there's just so much to deal with we deal with our hormones we deal with a lot of responsibilities that are expected on us we deal with a whole lot of society standards we are dealing with beauty standards as a woman we have to be dealing with weight issues and then on top of it we are still children to our parents and also some of us we are mothers some of us we are wives to our husbands some of us we are the employees some of us we are the employers so there's just so much titles that we wear as women and some Sometimes it can be difficult to find your feet. It can be so hard. I can attest to it. I am still trying to navigate this thing of being a woman, this thing of being a godly woman, of being a soft woman, because sometimes it can be so hard, because sometimes you you, you can't even be feminine because you are thinking that you'll be taken advantage of and sometimes you want to fall like in control you don't want to be so vulnerable because you're feeling like you'll get crushed you'll get rejected or you will later regret if you end up revealing your weaknesses to certain people but today I am here for you girl child I am here for you woman I am here for you with this podcast that is why when you look today we are talking about how to exit your lazy girl era and become a diligent godly feminine woman so a brief background on me i am i am sharon and i am a wife i am a mom i am uh, I, I used to be in corporate, but now I've left corporate. I'm doing my own things. I do have another uh, YouTube channel, a Christian channel. I'll see if I can put my link to it. There's so many things that I'm busy with. I, I have a blog. There's so many things that I am doing. So overall, I am a, a, a digital content uh, creator. And it's not easy. It's really not easy doing all those things. Because sometimes when you feel like you are excelling in your, in your workspace, you find that now you are dropping the ball at being that good wife for your husband. Or you are dropping the ball at being that good mother to your kids. Or now you are dropping the ball at that relationship that you were having with God when it becomes sometimes too busy you end up neglecting certain aspects of your life you end up even neglecting your mental wellness or you end up even neglecting to prioritize yourself you neglect self-care so it's it can be quite a challenge it can be so hard so I understand some of you who are feeling so overwhelmed today or now you are just at the point of giving up or you don't even look forward to waking up in the morning because you are always feeling so discouraged because you can't just do anything right when you try to do this part right something falls something doesn't something goes wrong in the other aspect of your life i remember at some point i had given up on my dreams i had just given up on my dreams because i've tried doing several things and it failed and i I accepted that this will be my fate. This will be my life. I should just become comfortable with it. I'll always be in corporate. I won't never, I'll never move into my dream house, dream car, all these things. I should just accept my fate until I was transformed, until God spoke to me. And now I am a transformed person. And I used to wake up every time feeling so tired. Like I would be sleeping the, in uh, seven hours, but I would still wake up in the morning feeling so tired until I even spoke to myself that no this can't continue even if I'm feeling this way I'll still continue doing the things that I want to do these days when I wake up in the morning I no longer suffer from such fatigue so some of you might be asking yourself now how do you exit this lazy era in your life yes it's understandable because sometimes we go through difficult situations in our life I, rem I remember at some point in 2021 I was going through grief a season of grief i had lost two of my family members and it was not easy but what helped me during that time was operating in my purpose 
was speaking and helping other people finding my purpose discovering that oh there's youtube and then that's where i was speaking healing words of healing on on youtube and that's how i also got my my healing during that time when i was going through a season of grief imagine you are dealing with grief at the same time you still have toddlers at the same time you are a wife it's like it was so hard it was so difficult and some days it's it it still is difficult but god helps us when you, you you go to his word you remember his promises when you see other women doing it you realize that other women have even been through worse yet they are doing amazing things yet they are not giving up so yes as a woman yes it can be so difficult meeting the beauty standards as women you can see there's certain beauty standards your hair has to be a certain way your face has to be a certain way your your dress code has to be a certain way the way you speak has to be a certain way so as a woman it can be so challenging it can be so difficult and as women we get judged a lot we get blamed a lot if it happens that a relationship fails guess who gets blamed it's the woman it means that she was not taking care of her man or if maybe there is marital delay it's the woman because she is so controlling it's because she's so bossy so no man wants to come to her no man wants to make her his wife so you can understand that as women we are going through so much as women it's like the benchmark that is used on us as women is just high up there but today i just want to mention a couple of things that um that we can be doing as women making reference as well uh to them to the bible so sometimes like i just want to give you an example so i have a girl child so i have a boy child and a girl child and it's so different raising them so you find that with a girl boy child he's more chilled in life he's good he's you tell him to apologize he does it you tell him to do this he does it but now when it comes to the girl child it's like it's already wired onto her dna that she she is like uh more on the controlling side she doesn't want to accept when she's wrong she's always right if you tell her that no you've done something wrong she cries she plays the victim so sometimes as as women it's already embedded certain characters about as it's like they are embedded onto our dna and we have to unlearn certain things as we are growing up because now these things which are good qualities at certain things they can also be bad qualities yes she's a go-getter she she knows what she wants but some of these qualities now when they are perceived in society standards they can be wrong for the future so it's like you can see as women we are dealing with a lot and then so there is a certain woman in the bible there are many other women in the bible they had like godly qualities they were great women women to aspire to be there for the like for for an instance there is your esther esther was not an ordinary kind of woman there is no your naomi in the bible naomi was a special kind of woman but today we are going to be dwelling on esther and what made her to be that soft to be that outspoken um uh, feminine godly woman so the first thing about esther that i like about her is that esther had the ability to listen i know sometimes with my husband will be like no wait for me to finish my statement why do you have to interject me why do you have to so it's like but esther here esther had that ability to be listening to advice she waited she waited she listened that is why the king also liked her that is why she won the approval of many other people it's because she knew how to be soft she knew how to listen so when she was being advised that these are the things you should say when you go to the king she took that particular advice and only said the things that she was told to say so you can see that she had that ability to listen which is a skill that some of us as women we don't have we want to be listened to but we never want to listen to someone else we don't want to take other people's advice but we always want to be dishing out advice to other people and then number two on how to be calm that godly woman and how to exit your lazy girl era it's 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 
also learn to apply and partake in opportunities. Just look at Esther. If Esther did not take up the opportunity of being the queen, even if she had been praying and praying and praying, I want to be queen. When the opportunity arose and she did not go and apply to be there and go and participate to be there, it means that she would not have been called. She would not have made it to that particular position. So it is important to be positioned in yourself it's similar to if i can say that oh i want to be miss world and then the time comes now for miss world if i did not even go and participate in the local uh, beauty contest in the national beauty contest what are the chances that i will ever become miss world it will never happen so it is important as a woman that if there's something that you want begin to apply for it begin to join in it and then the third point is finding and living your purpose. It's quite important. I remember with me, before I found my purpose, before I was on YouTube doing this thing, my image was not on point. I, I When it comes to self-care, I was not prioritizing myself. I did not have self-care. My confidence was quite low. But now because I was finding my purpose, now I knew that, oh, I have to fix up my hair. So every month I made sure that I I do my hair my hair always looks good and i also like now good uh in terms of my face i do some face beats a little bit it's like not all the time but i do it and also in terms of the way that i dress up now it's also like my confidence is now high up there and guess what the more i love myself and take care of myself and eat right and do all these things guess what now other people also begin to love me when you don't love yourself other people won't love you it's like after now i found my purpose after now my confidence i gained i regained my confidence now even my husband loved me more i am getting a lot of compliments from him that i was not getting even before so now this thing has helped me to prioritize our self-care and you know that men can be visual beings men are visual beings men are visual beings yes as a christian woman you should not really be focusing much on uh they can say you should not be focusing much on your external image but it's important your external image must also reflect what is on the inside you must also it must also re reflect the image of god because god is saying that you are beautiful so this is not to make you beautiful Beautiful, but it's just to enhance your beauty as well so that also you know in times of uh people when they are looking at us that's where they even like they pay attention to us when they see that oh this woman it's someone who is presentable but yes finding your purpose now it helps you now to even find yourself it helps you now to even love yourself more so the moment i began to find my purpose to live my purpose i became a different person i became more confident in life i felt more beautiful than ever before so number four it's important not to be that controlling nagging woman who's always nagging you can see with queen esther queen esther when now mordecai had sent people to speak to her about the jews about the decree that had been passed that the jews are going to be destroyed she said that they haven't been called to the king in over 30 days but this means that she was not that kind of nagging woman that woman who went and nagged her husband that no why aren't you showing me love or now she began doubting herself that is there something wrong with me but you can see that she was chilled she was calm she knew her worth she was not that nagging woman so god is also saying in our lives don't be that nagging type of woman that controlling type of woman if you don't like certain things the way that certain things are playing out in your relationships go and nag before god be like esther instead of esther trying to go to the king and saying a whole lot of things she she first fasted. She first prayed before God. And that is when she went before the king. So God is also saying that go nag before him. Go tell God the things that are not happening right in your life. Then only after that, God is going to be giving you a strategy on how to be approaching certain things in your life. You'll see that you are going to find so much favor. The same way Queen Esther, she found so much favor now when she went before the king. She didn't nag. She, she took her problems to God and God fixed it up for her. 
Number five, it's important to be that praying woman because the Bible says that don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, make your request known before the Lord. So it's important to be that prayerful woman. If you encounter any difficulty in life, if you are encountering any challenges in life, go before God in prayer. Sometimes as people will feel like, ah, prayer is for this kind of problems. But even the smallest thing in your life, even relationship troubles in your life, you can go before him. Even certain things when you feel like you are always being sick or always getting headaches, you can go before God. Or even when you feel like, no, people are not treating you right. People don't see your worth. You can go before God and pray about those things. The same way Queen Esther, she went before God and prayed for favor before God. She knew that her man was not giving her attention and she took it before the Lord. So anything that is a matter before you, anything which is not going right, God is saying that you can go before him, pray to him. Number six, it's important to be taking action. So don't only just pray, pray and take action the same way Esther prayed. And she also took action. She didn't just pray and say, I will pray and wait for the king to come to me. She prayed and then she took action and went to the king. So take action, have faith, show that you do have faith because faith without works, it is dead. So number seven, it's important to be beautiful inside and out. You shouldn't only be beautiful outside, but you should also be beautiful on the inside. That is why you could see the scripture says that Esther, she dressed so well and went before the king and went before her husband. So it's important how you present yourself. And also when she went to him and spoke to him, she spoke to him in respect. She's like, no, I want to throw a banquet for you. So you could see also so she was beautiful on the inside. She was so kind. She was a kind-hearted woman. So it is important to be beautiful. That is why you could see Rebecca, the way she scored marriage to Isaac. It's because she was so kind. When she saw the servant, she didn't just see him as the servant. She was still kind to him. She offered to give him water. She offered to water the camels. And that is how she attracted marriage into her life. Why? Because she was beautiful on the inside as well sometimes the mistake that we make as women is that when we see people of certain class we feel like there's no need to greet them back someone will greet you and be like ah i won't greet them back i'll just ignore just just say hi it won't take anything away from you if someone greets you just greet them back it was not gonna take anything away from you so it's important to be kind whether to strangers whether to people that you know whether to people who are not even in your class or people that you don't even dream of marrying it's important just to be kind or let me tell you as well so with me but with my husband we went to the same university at some point we were in the same church but at that time we didn't date but then years later, he reached out to me on Facebook and I was kind to him. I responded to him. And guess what? I am married today to him. Why? Because I was being kind to him. So imagine if I was not kind to him. So number eight. It's controlling the tongue. It's very, very important to control your tongue. Oh my goodness. Because the tongue is such a small object in the body, but it has the ability to spark a fire. So it is quite important to control the tongue. Know what to say, how to say, because it said that it is not about what you say, but how you say it. So it is important as a godly woman to watch what we are saying. Yes, sometimes certain things will make you angry and you'll want to get your point across but it's very very important to control the time and watch the space where you are and who you are talking to it's still important to say certain things in respect don't disrespect people in the process and then number nine, it is important to keep watch of the environment that you are in. You must be surrounded by the right people. If you are surrounded by the wrong company, obviously, even your life is not going to reflect those things. If you are surrounded by people who are maybe feminists or people who don't believe in respecting men or respecting other people. So also your life is going to be like that. So it's important to surround yourself with people who are positive about life 
life people who are also aligned to the kind of things that you also want in your life you must be in the company of right people if you want to be that diligent godly woman surround yourselves with people who also aspire the kind of life that you want also and then also it's important to have those boundaries, to set those boundaries with people as well. It's quite important because if you end up in the wrong friendships and people might tell you to do things which are against your own morals, against your own values. So it's important to have those boundaries. And then number 10. The last one, it's to understand your role as a person, as a woman. Sometimes, yes, the role requires you to be a mom if you have a child. Yes, be a mom. Sometimes if you are the child to your, to your parents, yes, you must be the child. But the mistake that we end up making as women is like we want to mother our men. We want to mother our boyfriends. We want to mother our our spouses but that role is for their moms it's not for you so yes sometimes they won't be doing the kind of things that you want but it's still very important to know your role your role is to be that wife your role is to be this person in their lives so it's important to know your role some roles yes they'll require us to be knowing your place at work that you are an employee so you need to be taking those instructions you need to be what's required doing what's required of an employee know that you, you know your role that you are the employer yes, sometimes as an employer you might be the woman but you are the employer you have people reporting under you so it's going to require you now to be yes as as much as you are still feminine you are still going to be expected to be the boss make the critical the crucial decisions to make sure that the company still succeeds you still meet the goals meet the deadlines but it doesn't mean that you have to be a bad person in the in the process so you can just see that being a woman can require it does require a lot of things and this is something that we are going to continue talking about and we can do it we can do it as a woman you can do it other women have been doing it and when you are not doing it from your own strength and you allow god to be your strength you allow god to renew your strength it even becomes so much much easier so if you want to be this godly woman god understands that you are striving for perfection but right now you are not perfect and he can see that sometimes yes you do fail and he is willing to forgive you he is willing to forgive you don't feel like you are not good enough for god you are not good enough for him god is saying that you are good enough just the way you are come to him the way you are he will accept you at whatever condition who you are he will accept you for who you are his he will deal with you he will transform you from the inside out just allow yourself to surrender just surrender to him and he is going to make everything all right you will see that it no longer feels like a huge burden anymore he will guide you to the right places to the right people the same way in Psalms 23, where the Bible says that the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He leads me beside still water. So God is still going to lead you into the green pastures when you are with him. He's not going to be misleading you. So as long as you allow him to be first in your life, everything is going to work out. Everything is going to flow together in the name of Jesus. Amen.